Story 1 An economics professor at a university said he never missed a student but had missed a class. The class insists that a perfectly organized society is a society where nobody is rich and nobody is poor and that is a great balance. So the professor said, OK, so my class will conduct an experiment on that. All points will be aggregated and divided equally, everyone will get the same points, so no one will slip and no one will get A. After the first test, the grade point average for the whole class was B. The students were very sad and the lazy students were very happy. On the second test, lazy students were even lazy, and hard-working students decided they should study less. The average score for the second one is D. No one is happy. In the third grade, the average score was F. The score did not increase, and the quarrels, accusations, names broke out, everyone was upset and no one wanted to learn to benefit others. To the last post, all slipped, and everyone was surprised. The professor told them that, through the results of the tests, you can easily see that what kind of social style you are looking for is difficult to achieve because the idea is very attractive. But once put into implementation no one motivated to work anymore. Nothing is simpler than that. Finally, he concluded. You cannot make poor people rich by making the rich poor go. People do not do anything still enjoy while the people do not enjoy it. The government cannot give anyone something without taking it from others. When half the people find that they do not need to do anything because there is another half to do, the other half thinks they do not benefit because it will be taken away by others, it is the beginning of the end of all. Society No one can increase wealth by dividing it. Story 2 A band of robbers armed with the intention of robbing the bank, one of them shouted, All stand still, remember the money belongs to the state, while your life belongs to you. All the staff in the bank heard the silence, and all seemed to give up on the idea of resistance. This is called, method of initiation, change to the way of thinking, or of thinking of others. Understand what the opponent thinks is 90% victory. Suddenly she saw the beautiful stuff scared and turned away face away. Another robber said, we robbed, not to rape. This is called, professional behavior. Focus only on the work you are trained. Or is the skill focused on the main goal? Not to distract from your original goal, you will succeed and never be disappointed. After the banker put all his money in the robber's pockets, a younger robber, with an MBA, told the older robber, who graduated high school anthem, how much do we rob? Immediately, the old robber shouted, you are so stupid, you do not have to lose your strength. The time is golden, wait, tonight TV will say how much we rob. This is called, experience, today's experience is more important than paper, books. Watch and learn from the fact, do not just learn through books, you will succeed. After the bandits had left with the bags stolen, the branch manager was about to immediately call the local police. But the chief of account rushed to him and whispered in his ear, wait. Let's put 80 million into the money robbed, we'll have money. This is called, swim along the waterline, convert adverse situations into favorable conditions. Or decisiveness, and quickly grasps the opportunity when it comes. That night, the TV reported that the 100 million dollars was stolen from the bank. While the counts are counting, there are only 20 million. They understand, and are very angry. We risk our lives just to get 20 million, so that asterisk leaders don't have to do anything, just sit and rob the 80 million. It is true that only study, with degrees, they are just sitting on the chair, they rob the money is superior to us. This explains why, having knowledge is as valuable as gold. Working with knowledge and using grey matter can bring you light work, but it is worth more than other manual tasks. In life there are always things we can quickly see, there are things we do not see from the outside, and truth is only relative. Story 3 How heavy is this glass? 50 grams 100 grams 125 grams The students replied. I cannot know exactly if it was not worth it. But my question is, 
what happens when I keep this glass for a few minutes? Nothing, the students said. Okay, so what if I hold for an hour? The professor asked. Your teacher will start hurting, said one student. Yes, and if in a day. Your hands can numb, and you may have muscle aches, numbness, definitely go to the hospital. Another student said. And all the class laugh. Very good. But in all cases, the weight of the cup changes? He asked again. No. The students replied. So, what makes my hands hurt, numbness? And instead of holding on, what should I do? The students are awkward. Then one answered, put the glass down. Exactly. Said the professor. The problems in life are like this. When you keep it in your head for a few minutes, it's okay. Think more, they hurt you. And if you keep trying, they start to numb you. And you will not be able to do anything. Story 4 A new teacher realized that there was always a boy in the class who was insulted as a fool. During the play, he asked the group why. It was a foolish man. If you give it 5 rubles and 10 rubles, then it will cost 5 rubles, because it is 5 rubles bigger is better. Here, you look. Group mate raised two coins and gave it to the other. And he chose the five rubles as before. The surprised teacher asked. Why did you choose five rubles without choosing ten rubles? Look, you look five rubles bigger. After school, the teacher came to the boy asked. Can not you understand that the five rubles are only bigger in size, but ten rubles can you buy more? If you take ten rubles, next time they will not give you any more. He answered. Do not laugh or hurry to the gloom of others because they are probably using it to fight you. The opposite you may not be stupid. Story 5 In the years of World War II, the Nazis massacred the Jews in concentration camps. At one concentration camp, two young Jews were lucky enough to escape, but had to try to get past the guns, the hounds and the promised land of the Nazis. Not reached. They keep running in the darkness, in hunger, in the end the old Jew stops and talks to the young man. This young man, I did not have the strength to be able to cross the long distance. I have a small piece of bread to help him fill the hunger and now I give him, hoping he will reach the land without the slaughter of the Jews. But the road is far away, the piece of bread is small so I hope that it will not be too much strength to eat. The young man thanked the old man and continued to run away occasionally wanting to wrap his loaf of bread on his loaf of bread, but remembered his words, trying to run away with the desire to live. He was fortunate to meet the good people on the runaway road, giving him food and drink to nourish. At this time he took the cloth that old man for him, there is a dry bread that is just a piece of wood. It is because of that piece of wood that he has the will to continue running away in fatigue, as it reinforces the belief in his steps. Looking back on life, are we missing a goal and a belief that we can reach the end of the road? Story 6 In one village, a poor farmer owes a large sum of money to the village headman. The fake, very old and ugly, always fantasized about the beautiful young daughter of the farmer. So, he proposed an exchange. He said he would be willing to give up the debt if he married his daughter. He would put a black pebble and a white pebble into a bag of empty money. Then, the girl will have to pick a pebble, there are three cases occur. Case 1, if you choose the black pebble, she will become his wife and her father's debt will be erased. Case 2, if you choose the right white stone, you do not have to marry him and your father's debt will still be erased. Case 3, if she refuses to pick one of the stones, her father will be thrown into jail. At that time, they were standing on a gravel road alongside the farmer's garden. When talking, the bastard bent down to pick up two pebbles, and the girl noticed that he had put in both pockets of black pebbles. He then asked the girl to pick one from the bag. Facing that difficult choice, the girl managed to find a wonderful way to save her father, while rescuing her from the cunning game. And here's how she does it. She reached into her bag and pulled out a pebble. Not letting everyone see, she fumbles, 
dropping it down the road it was strewn with pebbles and it was immediately lost among the numerous pebbles. Oh, how come I'm so clumsy now, she said. But okay, if you look at the pebble left in your pocket, you'll know the color of the pebbles I have chosen. Of course, the remaining pebble is black, so the pebble girl chosen by default must be white. And then he could not admit he cheated and forced the debt to the farmer family unconditionally as promised. The girl was very smart and flexible to turn the situation around, making it her advantage. Story 7 Once upon a time, there was a golden mountain, leading to the mountain with only one road, Iron Bridge. Those who went to the mountains before gold digging back and forth a lot, soon the bridge was broken, only the right one chain of iron chain dangling, under the bridge is a deep abyss of ten thousand. However, many unfortunate people have crossed this bridge to dig gold. And so many fell into the abyss. One day, there was a fool and a smart man had to cross this bridge to enter the mountain of gold. The fool eagerly stomped on the iron chain, staggered up the bridge. Intelligent person standing on the side of observation, sweating for it, small iron chains like this, careless one is falling right down the abyss, tan broken meat is playing, too dangerous. But the idiot on the bridge did not think so much, his eyes still aiming at the golden mountain, a thought of digging gold, he staggered over the safety bridge. Soon he returned, carrying a heavy gold bag on his shoulder. The smartest admirer, momentarily hesitated, finally unable to resist the temptation of gold, he immediately went up the iron bridge. After crossing the bridge, his eyes kept glued to the chain, only fear of carelessness fell to the ground. But apparently, the iron chain was deliberately against him, so it swayed very strongly. The smart man looked down into the abyss. It seems that he can see a lot of white skeletons, his legs uncontrollably uncontrollably. He wants to go all the way to the front like a fool, but he cannot control his fear in his heart. He was scared to go back, but his legs did not obey his orders anymore. In the end, the smart person is so scared that his whole body froze, stumbled, fell to the abyss. Humans need wisdom, but think too much to be afraid of the first, afraid of the tail, eventually losing the courage to move forward, will fall into the abyss. At times, we also need to be like fools, risking their lives, in spite of everything, getting rid of all the Bibles, one heart for the goal, the determination to move forward, the light to success. Story 8 Once, a young Jewish boy asked his famous New York cleric for a Talmud, Jewish knowledge. Did you speak Arama? He asked. No, I do not know that language. What about the Hebrew? He asked. No. So at least you have studied the Torah childhood? No, I have not. But do not worry, I graduated from UC Berkeley and I successfully defended Socrates' thesis in philosophy. To complete some of the items in it, I need to find out about the Talmud. This is the deepest book on Jewish wisdom, I will test a test, and if you pass, I will help you study it. The young man agrees and the cleric continues. There were two men climbing out of a chimney, one with a clean face, the other with a black streak. So who will be the face wash? The man's eyes widened in surprise, this is a logical question. Obviously the dirty man will wash his face. Wrong. The dirty face man will look at the clean face man and then his face is clean too. Meanwhile, face man clean look dirty face and then his face is also dirty. In other words, clean face wash. What a difficult question. The boy begged another question. The cleric proceeds to the same puzzle as before. And he wondered. Was not the clean faced man washed? Wrong, both of you will wash your face. Clean face people look dirty face will think his face is also dirty. Therefore, clean face first wash. After that, the dirty face found that clean face was washed face, so the dirty face also washes. Oh, I do not think I made another mistake. Let me give you one more chance. The clergyman kept repeating the same question, as the man raised his eyebrows, the result was that the two men were washing their faces. 
you're wrong again. None of them will wash their face. The dirty-faced man sees the person clean and thinks he is clean and does not wash. The clean face will find that the dirty face does not wash so he will not need to wash. The young man was sad but still tried to reassure the cleric, please believe me again, I know you are smart enough to learn the Talmud and ask other questions. The priest asked the same question as he had before. The desperate boy screams, none of them will wash the face as he said above. You're wrong. Explain to me, why do two people get out of a chimney and dirty people have clean people? This question is completely irrational and meaningless. If you devote all your life to finding the wrong questions, the answer will not lead you anywhere. Story 9, Two People and Wallet Two pedestrians walking together on a road, one suddenly picked up a sturdy wallet. I'm so lucky. He says. I've got a purse. It's heavy, so it's full of money. Do not say, I picked it that way, said his companion. To be honest, we have picked it up and we're so lucky. You have to work together, you have to share both the sewing and the risk of the new road. Oh no, no, the other said angrily. I picked it up, it was mine. As soon as they heard a loud shout, stop, steal. They looked around and saw a bunch of people with sticks walking toward them. He picked up his purse and panicked. We die if they find us in their wallet. Oh no, no, the other replied, he did not say we before, so now you are not saying we. Dies. Lesson, we do not expect people to share with us the risk of not sharing with them the good luck. Story 10 One woman has a habit of baking bread for her family, always doing one more to leave to the poor. She left the loaf of bread out of the window for the poor to pass through. Day by day, an old man hunchbacked to take bread. Instead of saying thank you, he just walked around muttering words like a mantra. Your evil deeds remain with you, and the good you do will return to you. This goes on, day in and day out. Every day, the elderly came to take the cake and muttered again. Your evil deeds are with you, and the good you do will return to you. Day by day, the woman slowly frustrated in thought. Get the cake, do not know how to thank the words annoying. What do you want to imply? Then one day, with all due respect, she thought of making the old man go out of sight. She told herself. I will make him lose his form. She mixed the medicine into the bread she had more than usual, shaking hands to poison the cake into the window, suddenly feel panic. What are you doing? She threw a loaf of poisoned bread into the fire and replaced another cake on the window. As always, the old man came and took the bread and muttered again. The bad deeds that you do stay with you, and the good things that you do will return to you. The old man holding the loaf of joy left, no one knows in the heart of the woman has just experienced a fierce battle. One thing that no one knows is that when they put bread to the poor on the windowsill, she prayed for her son to look for a job far away four months without getting the news. I vow to return home peacefully, well. That afternoon, there was a knock on the door. When she opened the door, she was surprised to see her son standing in front of the door. He was skinny, his clothes ragged to pathetic. He is hungry and tired. When he saw his mother, he said. Mummy, I came home was a miracle. When I was a mile away from home, I collapsed from hunger and could not walk and thought I would die on the way, but suddenly a hunchback passed, I begged him to give me something to eat. And he was too kind to give me a whole loaf of bread and some water. He said. This is what I have every day, but today I give you because you need it more than me. When the mother heard the words, her face changed. She must rely on the door to fall from falling. She remembered the loaf of bread she had poisoned that morning. If she did not throw it into the fire, her beloved son had eaten and died. Immediately she recalled the old man's repeated words. In life, there is always the law of cause and effect. What you do today is the cause of things that will come to you in the future, so always live well and never have to be ashamed of your conscience and he. Story 11 A cruise ship in distress at sea, 
on a boat with a very difficult new cable to the front of the rescue boat, on the lifeboat with only one seat left. At this time, the man left his wife to stay, and jumped himself into the rescue boat. Woman standing on the boat about to sink, shouted to the man a sentence. Here, the teacher asked the students, you guess, what would the woman scream? All the students were upset, saying, I hate you, you have mistaken people. At this point the teacher noticed a student still not the answer, asked the boy. The student said, teacher, I think the woman will say, take good care of our children. The surprised teacher asked, have you heard this story? The student shook his head, no, but my mother before I died also told my father that way. The teacher was moved, very well answered. The man is rescued back home, alone raising an adult daughter. Many years later, he died, the girl at the arrangement of things, discovered his father's diary. It turns out, when mother and father sat on the ship, the mother was incurable, in the decisive moment, the husband took the chance to live with his only. The diary wrote, I wish you and I could all sink to the bottom of the sea, but I cannot. For our daughter, I can only let you sleep alone deep in the deep ocean. I'm sorry. When the story is over, the classroom becomes quiet, the students understand the meaning of this story, good and evil in the world, sometimes a mess, difficult to distinguish, so should not be easy. Identify others. People like to actively pay for the money, not because of abundant people, but because people consider friendship more money than money. At work, volunteers get a lot of work about themselves, not because they are stupid, but because people understand the meaning of responsibility. After arguing the apologist first, not because of the wrong person, but because one understands the cherished side of his side. Volunteers help others, not because of what they owe but because they are seen as friends.